Free energy comes from motors that produce torque without voltage and generators that produce voltage without torque. A free energy motor is explained here. Ironically, the explanation uses fundamental conservation of energy equations to prove that absolute conservation of energy is a misconception. Magnetic energy is fully understood. Only the correct x dimension is required to satisfy this fundamental equation. The electrons in your TV picture tube absolutely obey the law implied by this equation. So too do the electrons in your stereo speaker. The electrons in a motor are shielded from 99% of the magnetic field, yet they seem to behave the same. 2 out of 3 isn't bad. Ignoring the criminal and inventing slash theorizing back EMF is more palatable than free energy, no matter how good it might taste. The theory would imply that a magnet motor was impossible because there are no flowing electrons. But Howard Johnson certainly proved that theory had holes. Sailors knew that the flat earth theory had similar holes and Copernicus's equations proved it. A simple question. Aren't two magnets attracted to each other's centers of force? Doesn't that imply that x should be the separation distance between the force centers? Logical but it would mean that motors like Johnson's could work and challenge absolute conservation of energy. Howard Johnson's motor was feebly weak and could be dismissed for being impractical. I would bet my life that the x dimension in his motor was the separation distance between pole face force centers and the forces had nothing to do with electric current. Two magnets and the centers line up. How could you possibly be impressed? Minimum energy is with the centers aligned, but we are interested in what happens when the fields are skewed by moving electrons. What if they could be skewed a different way? Perhaps like this. The centers still align, but they could be anywhere along the surface. Let's find out where the centers of force are by using simple Newtonian mechanics. Now we know exactly where the center of force is, one third of the way from the oblique angle edge. More tests show 17% more energy is required to move in one direction than the other. Can you guess which direction or how these magnets would react as a directional compass? My predictions were wrong and I was later disappointed to find that finite element analysis could not predict these results. That was a blessing in disguise. Johnson, Brady, and Milo used these direct magnet-to-magnet -magnet reactions in their magnet motors. I added steel just so I could trust the FEA results. That brings us back to the equation and a question that I hope doesn't sound too condescending. The equation indicates that force requires changing energy. The force needs to be directed so that it produces useful torque. Typical motors get to the bottom line in the simplest way by skewing the magnetic field on a single rotor. That magnetic energy must come from somewhere and with only one rotor, the electric energy power source is the only somewhere available. Why not get the skewing energy for one rotor from other rotors where the skew energy is being reduced? It seems like a much better option than feeding a hungry power source and contributing to oil company profits. In this case we are using lobes instead of rotors. Three lobes is good for interchanging energy but five lobes may be optimal for smoothing out the force. This equation's only requirement is that the energy needs to change. The lobes meet that requirement just as well as a rotor. The lobes can't rotate to simply convert the force into useful torque translation illustrated here accomplishes that essential task. The flux can be analyzed. Here we have two positions with 60 degrees of translation. Some points to note. For these 60 degrees of translation, a majority of the work indicated by red and high concentration of flux lines is being done by lobe 2. Secondary forces shift from lobe 3 to lobe 1. Energy indicated by density of flux lines doesn't change much in the magnets, but varies greatly across the gaps. Low, low density in 
the lobe magnets shifts from lobe 3 to lobe 1 during the translation. The most significant point may be the low wattage. With this much skew energy, a typical motor would produce 75 watts. As a practical machine design, this might be considered a failure. I think 20% for free is better than 100% at a high cost. Furthermore, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Motor builders from the past chose the easiest way to produce useful torque. I have chosen the easiest way to explain the alternative. I am quite sure I will never be able to get more than 45% for free. I can live with that constraint. My main conclusion is, is energy must be conserved absolutely in primary reactions. However, transferring energy from one place to another only requires large catalytic forces. Wait a minute, that's how our refrigerators and air conditioners work. A 100 kW generator will provide all the energy I could ever possibly use. With knowledge of how the forces and energy really work and accepting the 45% constraint, I think I'll design a motor for that generator next. I don't think I'll use a rotor. Translating lobes probably won't ever do better than 20%, but I am sure I will use five of the alternative and not just one. It might take a miracle to achieve my goal, or maybe just the blessing in disguise I earned when I wasted my money on those magnets that could not be explained.